This is the Oslim Mini Cooper. It's a cute little thing, and my goal is to make it more aerodynamic. The rules are that I have to leave the underlying structure alone. I can't use easy mods like rear wings, aerodams, and splitter plates because that would just be too easy. And I can only make one change, and the penalty for not succeeding in making this car more aerodynamic is that I have to say that I'm a vegan. So naturally, I want to succeed. To identify places where I might be able to improve the Mini's aerodynamics, I did a simulation of it first. This is a plane going halfway through the Mini, and with the colors, it shows the velocity in meters per second, and the lines show where the flow is going. The front is very blocky, which slows the flow greatly. That also comes with a massive increase in the pressure, as we can see with this red in this pressure plot. And that high pressure bleeds underneath, which increases the lift of the car, and hence reduces its stability. So that might be one area where I can improve upon. The rest of the underbody is pretty decent though, the flow is very straight, and that comes with a lot of low pressure too, which is good for downforce production and stability. So there isn't too much to improve upon there. Coming to the hood, the front is actually pretty decent, and that is because it is rounded at the nose. So the flow can follow it pretty well. One minor downside is that the flow has to accelerate over it, which again results in low pressure, and that increases the lift of the car. Then the windshield is really upright, which isn't great because we can see the flow not only decelerating, but also recirculating. That creates a lot of drag. So this might be one possible area to improve upon, but I don't think I could make it too much better without altering the underlying structure of the car a lot. So this region is kind of ruled out. Coming to the roof, we see a pretty promising area though, because the flow separates a lot, and that is accompanied by a lot of low pressure, which increases the lift and reduces stability even more. So this region has a lot of potential because I'm thinking of maybe using vortex generators here to control the flow. I still need a little bit more information about the rest of the car though, so let's continue over the roof. So the good news for the car and the bad news for me is that the flow reattaches over the rest of the roof. So the pressure increases slightly. That also feeds a nicer flow to the rear and reduces its wake a little. However, it is still really big because the rear is very blocky and there is literally a sharp edge at the end of the roof and that makes the flow separate. So, so far, the two best candidates to improve upon are the front of the roof and the rear of the roof. I think that there's a lot of potential for both of them. Let's look at the drag to see which one has more promise though. So these red blobs show the drag and actually the front wheels are also really bad because you can see just how much drag is produced. But I don't think I can reduce that much without altering the structure of the car. So close, but no cigar. And the rear wheels are actually really good. They're even lower drag than most modern cars and that is because they are very shielded and they are very small. So as it stands, I think the front of the roof has the most promise. So I'm going to target that area to improve. As a benchmark, the Mini's drag comes in at 0.37, which is pretty bad, but the lift coefficient is even worse because it produces over 7 kilos of lift, which is really high, especially considering how small this car is. So I think focusing on reducing the lift is the best way of making it more aerodynamic, and I'm going to try to do that by concentrating on the front of the roof. That's the goal. Now, that's actually really challenging because you can see that the Mini has a really sharp edge running along the entire roof. I would like to put vortex generators at the front because they would usually help keep the flow attached. But here, the flow separates right at the front, so there's no way that I can put them ahead of the separation point, which is what you'd usually do. So what I'm going to do instead is make them way larger than they should be and hope that somehow the vortices coming off of them are strong enough to pull the flow down again and keep it attached. We'll see if it works. I've got five along the roof, and that should be enough as a proof of concept. Let's see how it went. So from this Vortex video, Vortex generators are working kind of well. They definitely are producing vortices. It's just that they aren't producing their typical long ones, but rather these Vortex rings. That is probably because they are seeing separated flow, so they're not seeing clean air. I'm not sure how these vortices are going to affect the flow though, and if they'll reduce the lift. If they don't, then I guess I'll have to be a vegan. Let's compare this original plane going through the car with this new one. So far, it doesn't look good, because not only are the vortex generators increasing the wake size over the roof, but the flow is much more unsteady there too. But as a consolation, because the bubble is so much bigger, the flow at the rear of the roof is angled down more, and that actually reduces the wake size a little, at least at the top. So there is kind of a silver lining, I guess. But the pressure plot shows that not only is the pressure even lower at the front, but the low pressure region extends even further over the roof. That is not looking good for the lift production. Now, if you look really closely at the diffuser region with the vortex generators, the wake is actually a little smaller and it kicks up a little bit more. So what I think is happening is that over the rear window, the vortex generators create lower pressure, which isn't great for drag there, but that low pressure sucks the flow from underneath the car more, and that should come with a lift reduction. And that only occurs because the vortex generators have such a huge effect on this already weird flow over the roof. This plane is looking down from on top and slices through the vortex generators to see exactly what is going on. So it's very strange because they definitely aren't producing pairs of counter-rotating vortices, but at the same time, they do have some kind of regular effect where between the vortex generators, we see very straight flow, but also very slow flow. So even in the very separated flow, the vortex generators seem to be trying to make order out of 
chaos. It's kind of like Twitter because we all know how sane everything is on there. Then the two end vortices seem to just lose it as they each produce one standing vortex on each side. From these streamlines, we can see their effects, where flow from around the sides of the car is being pulled up and over the roof and into these vortices. I mean, look at the flow literally at the side mirror height. It just shoots up to the rear roof. That doesn't happen on the original car. So I'm actually not even mad for these vortex generators. I'm pretty impressed. The streamlines also show just how much the vortex generators shoot the flow through the diffuser. Finally, looking at the drag, we see major changes. The A pillar produces a lot more drag, which has much to do with that redirection of the streamlines there. The front middle section also produces more drag despite vortex generators usually not having nearly such an effect, but the diffuser sees a major improvement and even the top of the wake is slightly lower drag. That results in the drag coefficient only raising by 40 counts to 0.41, so about a 10% increase. But what about the lift? Pre-vortex generator, the Mini produced 7.3 kilos of lift. With these vortex generators, the lift has dropped by 40% to 4.4 kilos. So the vortex generators worked. They didn't work the way I thought they would, but they still worked. So I ain't no vegan. Peace out, amigos.